All right. Well, today, my friend, today we're going to motherfucking have a... Uh, I'm going to break down a first book of uh, Niccolo Machiavelli's The Art of War. I want to show you a couple of things. I want you to understand what we're doing right now on YouTube when we do these streams. We have individuals in to have conversations about stuff and different issues. This is the same thing they were doing in the 1520s, right? And a lot of the discussions they had are the same discussions we're still having today. And I want you to see that as human beings, we truly haven't really come too far from where we were. So without further ado, this is Niccolo Machiavelli's The Art of War. I'm going to put this in the uh, description link. Okay? So here we go. As I believe that it is possible for one to praise without concern any man after he is dead, since every reason and supervision for adulation is lacking, I am not apprehensive in praising our own Cosimo Rucale, whose name is never remembered but by me without tears, as I have recognized him in those parts which can be desired in a good friend, among friends and in the citizen of his country, for I do not know what pertained to him more than to spend himself willingly, not accepting, not ex accepting that courage of his for his friends. And I do not know of any enterprise that this made him when he knew it was for good of his country. And I confess freely not to have met among so many men who I have known and worked with a man in whom there was never mind more fired with great and magnificent things. Nor does one grieve with the friends of a matter of his death, except for his having been born to <clears throat> born to die young, unhonored within his own home, without having been able to benefit anyone with that mind of his for one would know that no one could speak of him except to say that a good friend had died. It does not remain for us, however, for, or for anyone else who, like us, knew him to be able <laughs> because of, to keep his faith, since deeds do not seem to, to his laudable qualities. It is true, however, that fortune was not so unfriendly to him and that it did not leave some brief memory in the dexterity of his genius, as was demonstrated by some of his writings and compositions of amorous verses in which he was not in love, he employed in an exercise in order to make use his time un, uh, uselessly in his juvenile years, in order that fortune might lead him to higher thoughts. Here, it can be clearly comprehended that if his objective was exercise, how very happily he described his ideas and how much he was honored in his poetry. Fortune, however, having deprived us of the use of such a great, great a friend, it appears to me it's not possible to find any better remedy for us than to seek the benefit of his memory and to recover from it in any manner that were keenly observed or wisely discussed, and that there's nothing more of his recent discussions with the Lord Fabrizi Colonna had with him in his gardens, where matters pertaining to the war were discussed at length by that Lord and the questions keenly and prudently asked by Cosimo, by Cosimo, it seemed, it seemed proper and to me, having been present with friends of all, I recall to recall him in memory so that reading it to the friends of Cosimo who met there will renew it in their minds, the memory of his virtue and another part grieving for not having been there. We'll learn in part many things discussed wisely by most uh, <laughs> sagest man, useful not only to the military way of life, but to the civilian as well. I will relate, therefore, how Fabrizio Colonna. When he returned from Lombardy, where he had fought a long time gloriously for the Catholic king, decided to pass through, his, pass through Florence to rest several days in that city in order to visit his excellency, the duke, and see again several gentlemen with whom he had been familiar in the past. Whence it appeared <clears throat> proper to Cosimo to invite him to a banquet in his gardens, not so much to show his generosity as to have a reason to talk to him at length and learn and understand several things from him, according as one can hope to and from such a man, for it appeared to give him an opportunity to spend the day discussing such matters would satisfy his mind. Now, he has a lot of run on sentences when he motherfucking writes, right? Like legitimately, these sentences are retarded as fucking long. <laughs> and you never really know when they fucking, when they're going to fucking end because it seems like they should. But you got to remember this is wrote in the 15, 1560s, 1570s, something like that. You know what I mean? And all right. And this is like kind of like a preface to what we're going to get into here in a minute. You know what I mean? All right. Fabrizio, therefore, came as planned and was received by Cosimo together with several other loyal friends of his. Among them were Zanobi, um, Bunolamati, Battista della Pola, and Luigi Alamani, young men most ardent in their same studies and loved by him for whose good qualities because they were so praised daily by himself. We will admit Fabrizio, therefore, was honored according to the times and place with all the highest honors they could give him. 
As soon as the convivial pleasures were passed and the table cleared and every arranging of feasting finished, which in the presence of great men and those who have their minds turned to honorable thoughts is soon accomplished, because the day was long and the heat intense, Cosimo, in order to satisfy the desire better, judged it would be, be would be well to take the opportunity to escape the heat by leading them to the more secret and shadowy part of his garden, where they arrived there and chairs brought out and some sat in the grass, which was most fresh in that place. Some sat in the chairs, placed in those parts under the shadow of very high trees. Fabrizio praised the place as most delightful and looking especially at the trees. He did not recognize one of them and looked puzzled. Cosimo, becoming aware of this, said, Perhaps you have no knowledge of some of these trees, but do not wonder about them, because there are some which they were more widely known by the ancients and are those commonly seen today. And giving him the name of some and telling him that Bernardo, his grandfather, had worked hard in their culture. Fabrizio replied, I was thinking that it was just what you said I was in this place, and study make me remember and the study made me remember several princes of the kingdom who delighted in their ancient culture and shadow that they cast. And stopping speaking of this and somewhat upon himself as though in suspense, he added, If I do not think I would offend you, I would give you my opinion. But I do not believe in talking and discussing things with friends in this manner that I insult them. How much better would they have done, it is said to with peace to everyone, to seek to imitate the ancients in the strong and rugged things, not in the soft and the delicate, and in the things that they did under the sun, not in the shadows to adopt the honest and perfect ways of antiquity, not the false and corrupt, for while these practices were pleasing to my Romans, my country, without them, was ruined. To which Cosmo replied, but to avoid the necessity of having to repeat so many times who was speaking and what the other adds, only the name of those speaking will be noted without repeating the others. Cosmo therefore said, you have opened a way for discussion, which I desire, and I pray you to speak without regard, for I will question you without regard. And if in these questioning or in replying, I accuse or excuse anyone it will not be for accusing or excusing, but to understand the truth from you. Fabrizio. And I will be much content to tell you what I know, what I know of all that you ask me, whether it be true or not, I will leave it to your judgment. And I will be grateful if you ask me, for I'm about to learn as much from what you ask me as you will, as you will from me replying to you, because many times a wiser question there causes one to consider many things and understand many others, which, which without having being asked would never been understood. This is a very important paragraph. We're going to pause here a second, right <clears throat> now. The reason this paragraph's really fucking important, you know, what I mean, this is why, like, I I legit think like everybody should read Machiavelli before you read anything else, you know, what I mean, because Machiavelli will break down the nuances of human beings, right, in a way that no other fucking writer will do, and he will give you tools for learning and building yourself as a man and as a human being as you know, um, a boss, whatever the case might be, because this is what Machiavelli does. And it allows you to understand the world around you a whole lot better than you would understand it without having read the shit that he read. And you see what this dude just said right here. He said, look, a man learns as much from a dude questioning him, right? As he does from answering the fucking questions. As a person, you know, I mean, who's asking the questions and they're getting answered because you're able to sit here and go, wow, I never thought about that point of view before. And it allows you to enlighten your mind. And this is why, like I said, and I have conversations with everybody. You know, what I mean, like you sit there and you should never shut yourself off to somebody and just show out your point of view, because having your point of view challenged is as important as having your point of view. You know what I mean? Your paradigm may be completely false in what you're thinking. You know, I mean, your paradigms, what you think about shit before you think about it. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, like the fucking thought pattern that goes into what you're thinking about at that moment. So all right, we're going to continue on. All right. Cosmo, I want to return to what you were saying, that my grandfather knows of yours who had more wisely imitated the ancients and rugged things than in delicate ones. And I want to excuse my side because I will let you excuse the other your side. I do not believe that in your time there was a man who disliked living as softly as he and that he was as much a lover of that lovely life, which you praise. Nonetheless, he recognized he could not practice in, in his personal life, nor in that of his sons. 
having been born in such a corrupted age, where anyone who wanted to depart from the common usage would be deformed and despised by everyone. For if anyone in the naked state should trash upon, should thrash upon the sand under the highest sun or upon the snow in the most icy months of winter, as did the uh, Diogenes, he would be considered mad. If anyone like the Spartan should raise his children on the farm, make them sleep in the open, go with the head and feet bare, bathe in cold water in order to harden them and endure vicious tutes, so that they might then love life less and fear death less, he would be praised by few and followed by none. All right, man. Again, we got to we got to stop here for a second. You understand, OK, that this is the conversation between Metropoli and the individuals in the middle of the country right now. This is the exact conversation we're having at the moment. You know, it's like, oh, well, we don't want our we want to be able to have our kids play piano and violin. And, you know, we don't want them ever to have any hardships ever at all. And the motherfuckers in the middle of the country. You know, and the people in the end, you know, people like, you know, fucking raising in the fucking hood and in the hood and shit. They're standing here going like, yo, look, man, fucking this is real life. Like, you don't live in a real world. You know, fucking we're out here fucking working and grinding. We want our fucking kids to have that grind. And like, so this is a conversation that we're still having today. 500 years later. All right. And this is something that we should all be paying attention to. Now, all right, back to where we were. <clears throat> so that dismayed at these ways of living, he presently leaves the ways of the ancient and in imitating antiquity only does does only that which he can li with little wonderment. Fabrizio, you have escrews him strongly in this part. Certainly you speak the truth, but I did not speak so much of these rugged ways of living and those other more human ways, which have a greater conformity to the ways of living today, which I do not believe should have been difficult to introduce by one who is numbered among the princes of a city. I will never forego my examples of my Romans and their way of living should be examined and that the institutions of in their republic will be observed in her many things not possible to introduce into society where there might yet be something of good. What are those students? What are, this is Cosimo. What are those things similar to the ancients that you would introduce? Fabrizio, to honor and reward virtue, not to have contempt for poverty, to esteem the modes and orders of military discipline, to constrain citizens to love one another, to live without factions, to esteem less the private than the public good, and other such things we could easily be added in these times. Pause real quick. Okay, so... To honor and reward virtue, right? Basically, you know, I mean, to stand here and have the ability to fucking go, you're a man of honor, you're a man of respect, you know what I'm saying? You're a dude who does the right thing and you should reward that, you know what I mean? <clears throat> Not to have contempt for poverty. And this is, again, man, look, we still had this. Like, y'all motherfuckers out here think I'm fucking dumb, right? <laughs> like, y'all think I'm fucking slow because of how I talk, because I come from poverty. You look at the individuals who aren't doing well and you have contempt for them. You know, I mean, you don't fucking like them as people. You go, oh, fucking, they're fucked up. You know, I mean, there's something wrong with them, but they're just poor. There's nothing wrong with being poor. You know what I'm saying? Like, and, and I love poor people. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm of, and I'm from poor people. You know what I mean? And there's, there's much to be said for not having much. And I mean, coming from places that don't have much. I think, you know, as human beings, the class is nature of where the hell we are today in our society is fucked up. And you have to show respect for the individuals on the bottom as much as you do for the individuals on top. Right. <clears throat> and, you know, right. to esteem the modes and orders of military discipline, right. <clears throat> You know, to fucking sit here and have your military parades and honor your veterans and stand here and have respect for what your military does and what your military members are about. And we do that in our in our society. And see, this is what, our founders read Machiavelli hard. All right. So this is this is why I break this shit down to you to constrain citizens to love one another, to live without factions and to esteem less the private and than the public good. That's kind of socialist in its fucking nature, right? And, you know, I mean, I'm not a huge fan of that statement. You know, I mean, you can go against the writings and shit that you read. You know, I mean, you don't got to fucking buy into all of it. It's like the Bible. There's some good shit in there. There's some bad shit in there. Take the good and leave the bad. It is what it is. You know what I mean? Take the gun, leave the fucking cannoli. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's the same type of deal. 
Well, what was it? What was it? It's, you know, okay, take the cannoli and lead the gun, take the cannoli. You know, it is what it is. Anyway, we're, we're going to continue on. It is not difficult to persuade people of these ways when one considers at length and approaches them in a usual manner for the truth will appear in such examinations that every common talent is capable of undertaking them. Anyone can arrange these things. For example, one plants trees under the shadow of which he lives more happily and merrily than if he had not planted them. I do not want to reply to anything which you have spoken, but I do want to leave a judgment on these which can easily be judged. And I shall address myself to you who accuse those in serious and important actions are not imitators of the ancients. Thinking that in this way, I can more easily carry out my intentions. I should not want, therefore, to know from uh, from you whence it arises that in one hand you condemn those who do not imitate the ancients in their actions on the other hand in matters of war which is your profession in which you are judged to be excellent it is not observed that you have employed any of the ancient missions methods for those which have some similarity fabrizio you have come to the point where i've expected you to for what i said it did I, what I said did not merit any other question, nor that I wish for any other. And although I'm able to save myself with a simple excuse, nonetheless, I want your greater satisfaction in mind. Since the season allows it to enter into much longer discussion, men who want to do something ought to first prepare themselves with all industry in order <coughs> to be prepared to achieve which they have proposed. And whenever the preparations are undertaken cautiously, unknown to anyone, so no one can be accused of negligence unless he first discovered by the occasion in which they are not successful. It is seen that either he has not sufficiently prepared himself or that he has not some part given thought to it. And as that the opportunity has not come to me to be able to show the preparations I would make to bring the military to your ancient organizations. And it, I have not done so. I have not, I cannot be blamed either by you or by others. I believe this excuse is enough to respond to your accusation. God damn, man. Like, yo, anybody understand any of that shit? You know what I mean? Because I legitimately didn't understand most of it. So, I, so, you know, I like how he started this off, right? And although I'm able to save myself with a simple excuse, nonetheless, I want for your greatest satisfaction in mind since the weather allows it to enter into a much longer discussion. Men who want to do something ought to first prepare themselves with all industry. So that means if you're going to do something, you should make preparations to do it. You know what I'm saying? Like you should plan everything the fuck out and get where you need to go to. And that way, you know, I mean, when you get most of the way, when you start fucking doing some shit, you will notice that the preparations have been made, but you won't fucking, you won't be able to say that, you know what I mean, you did this shit half-assed. It's kind of the situation. You know what I mean? It would be enough that if I was certain that the opportunity did not present itself, Fabrizio, because I know you could doubt whether this opportunity had come about or not. I want to discuss at length which preparations are necessary to be made first, what occasions need to arise, what difficulty impedes in the preparations from being beneficial and the occasion from arriving that this is most difficult and most easy to do. He said, and Cosimo, you cannot do anything more pleasing for me and, the, and for the others than this. But if it is not painful for you, to, for you to speak, it will never be painful for us to listen. But at this discussion may be long. I want help from these, my friends, and with your permission, they will... And they, I will pray you one thing that you do not become annoyed if we sometimes interrupt you with some opportune question. Fabrizio, I am most content that you, Cosimo, with these other young people here should question me, for I believe that young men will become more familiar with military matters and will more easily understand what I have to say. The others, whose head is white and whose blood is icy, are in part the enemies of war and in part encourageable, as those who believe that the times and not the evil ways constrain men to live in such a fashion. So ask anything of me with assurance and without regard. I desire this as much because it will afford me a little rest as because it will give me pleasure not to leave you any doubts in your minds. I want to begin with from your words where you said that to me in war, which is my profession, I have not employed any of the ancient methods. Upon this, I say that this being a profession by which men of every time were not able to live honestly, it cannot be employed as a perception, profession except by a republic or a kingdom in both of these, if well established, will never allow any of its citizens to employ it as a profession. For he who practices it will never be judged to be good as to gain some useful usefulness from it. At any time, he must be rapacious, deceitful, violent, and have many qualities which in necessity do not make him good. Nor can men who employ this as a profession, the great as well as the least, be made otherwise for this profession does not provide for them in peace. Pause. All right. 
okay, let's 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 get into this real quick, right? Because this is this is an important part of this. All right. So what he's saying is is that no man should motherfucking stand here and be a soldier for a profession. All right. And the reason he's saying this is because of the fact that in peacetime, being a soldier does not provide you with living. All right. There's no reason to have a soldier in peacetime. And if you have soldiers in peacetime, right, they're going to end up having to fucking go through and, you know, fuck up your whole they're gonna go through and you know i mean tear down villages and fucking loot shit and extort people and you know they have to there's because they're soldiers and i mean if their profession is a soldier they're not a potter they're not a fucking you know i mean blacksmith they're not whatever they're just fucking soldiers they don't know how to do anything the fuck else you know i mean and they haven't had training they've been in fucking you know i mean they've been in the fucking army for you know i mean years or whatever fighting a fucking war and you can't, you know, I mean, keep paying them because you can't afford the fucking military, but uh, the military budget every fucking year and shit to pay all these fucking soldiers. So, you know, and this is why we have our country set up the way it is, where our military members are, you know, I mean, they go home. You know what I'm saying? When they're done with their shit, they go home. They're not full time fucking soldiers. You know, what I mean, they have a profession outside of the military. And this is something, again, our fucking forefathers read this fucking book. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Right, okay. Either the hope that there will be peace or to gain so much from the south of the time of war. All right. And wherefore, one of these two thoughts is this it is not occurring a good man from the desire to provide for oneself in every circumstance, robberies, violence, and assassinations from results from such soldiers due to friends as well as enemies, and from not desiring peace, or there arises these exceptions, which captains perpetuate upon those whom they lead. Because war hardens them, and even in peace occurs frequently, it happens that the leaders being deprived of their stipends and of their licentious mode of living, raise a flag of piracy and without mercy, sack a province. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, he goes through shit like this. But I'm going to tell you what, man. This is getting kind of long-winded, so we're going to split this up and we're going to end this right here. <laughs> this is a video for me because I like doing this type of shit. You know what I mean? And to be honest with you, this is a video for Rob, my boy, and Bivalent Cam. We're going to keep banging, keep trying to put out, you know what I mean, content that, you know, we think that y'all really need to hear. You know what I mean? And I hope all y'all watch this shit and listen to it. You know what I mean? I apologize if, you know, it's kind of boring and it's not as interesting as usual. But, you know, it is what it is. You know the deal, man. Like, share, and subscribe. It's Tom Peasy. Check out my man. Fucking, you know, my bottom bitch. Accelerate. Uh, Mr. the whole button. Fucking irate prostate. The Golf City squad. You know what I mean? All hail the fucking blue whale. Um, Shit. Oh, yeah. Balcony seats. You know what I mean? Check out the whole team, nigga. It is what it is. One love. Peace. Mm-hmm. <laughs>